Directly in front of me is an apartment building, but this entire area looked a lot different about 30 years ago. It was somewhere right about here that it was just a lot with two semi trucks. And in between those two semi trucks, a portal opened up and the T-800 fell into the 90s. Now right across the street used to be the Corral Biker Bar. And that's where the T-800 crosses this street completely naked. He goes into the corral and he gets himself some clothes and a motorcycle. But unfortunately, sometime in the late 90s, the corral was completely gutted by a fire and it was eventually torn down and it's now the Lakeview Terrace Library. So a little piece of trivia for you. Like I said, this was the corral bar and right around this corner is where Rodney King was pulled over by the LAPD and that whole incident took place. And those apartment buildings right there, they can be seen in Terminator 2 a little bit later in the movie. And those apartment buildings is where George Holiday lived. And George Holiday is the man that filmed the Rodney King incident. But before he filmed the Rodney King incident, he walked down here to the corral and he filmed a little bit of behind the scenes of them shooting that scene from Terminator 2 and it was on the same tape. So when he had to turn that tape over to the authorities, it had the Rodney King incident and it had the behind the scenes of Terminator 2. Pretty crazy, huh? Now, don't think that I didn't notice that Suzuki Samurai during the opening credits of the movie just because I didn't mention it yet. The introduction of the T-1000 takes place under the 6th Street Bridge would have been right here in this area, which is currently a construction site because back in 2016, they tore down the original 6th Street Bridge and they're currently building a brand new 6th Street Bridge. So everything that we see in the movie, all gone. But right over there on the other side of the bridge, that's where we see the police car pulling up and then he gets out of his car and he walks underneath the bridge and that's where he sees the hole in the fence from where the T-1000 entered. And if we look right over here, these electrical towers, these can be seen behind him when he's getting out of his police car. So these electrical towers are probably the only thing left from this area that we see in the movie. So after she grabs the paper off the front lawn, she heads up this driveway to the garage where John Connor is working on his dirt bike with his good friend, Sam. I've got Mama and Mr. D, two brothers and a sister. All right behind her, you can see the neighbor's house and the garage. I'm not gonna go up onto their property, but right here, that's the neighbor's house. That's the garage. She can't handle John, so she sends his foster dad out. That doesn't work out too well either, but he would have been standing right here in front of the house. Of course then, John and his buddy take off on the dirt bike, blasting some Guns N' Roses, and they head down the street this way. So right behind me was the Pescadero State Hospital where Sarah Connor was locked up, and these days it's a rehab facility. And right on the other side of that fence is the building that we see in the movie. The good news is the fence is really low and we can actually see the building. The bad news is the entire building is covered by trees. Back at John's house, the T-1000 shows up to pay him a visit. The police car pulls up right here in front of John's neighbor's driveway, and then the camera slowly pans up to show us who it is. We see John's neighbor's house behind the T-1000, and then the camera follows him up John's driveway to the front door.
Luckily for John, he wasn't home. He was at the ATM taking out a little bit of cash. Now, this was the bank that he was at. It's now some type of a church, uh, but they are really serious about security here. Not only do they have a fence going around the entire building, they also have this beware of dog sign, and there's definitely a dog in there. It came at me a minute ago. They also have signs warning people not to try climbing over the fence and plenty of cameras. But if we come over on the other side of the building, we can still get a pretty good shot of where the ATM was right there in front of the building. That's where John's friend was nervously keeping watch while John takes the money out of the ATM. You can see right there, that's where they were. The ATM would have been right past that third post. And after they get the money out of the ATM, they come running away from the bank towards the alley. And then John's motorcycle is waiting for them right here on the other side of the wall. And they're standing right here at the motorcycle. And that's when John's friend finds the picture of Sarah Connor. And we first hear John talking about his mom. So right down there is where they were just riding the motorcycle down Lamer Street and then we don't see this part but they would have come all the way down to the end of the street and then made a right into this entrance and this is where they enter into the wash and everything here still matches up perfectly. That utility pole, the house on the right side, the wall of the freeway, it all still matches up. The T-800 was coming down the street and then as he crosses over the wash, he looks to his right and that's when he sees John and his buddy riding through the wash. Okay, so this is where they would have used some movie tricks. So he flips around right there in the middle of the street. That's where he causes the cars to crash. And then you gotta look really hard but you can still match up some of those houses there in the background. He flips around and then he pulls up against the curb right here in front of me and he looks into the wash that's right here on my left. But if you look into this wash, you can see that it doesn't match up with what we see in the movie. That's because he pulls up right here, but then he's actually across the street when it shows him looking into the wash. He's back on the other side of the street. Now this is actually the view that we get of him looking into the wash and John and his friend riding up that ramp. So I already showed you this was the bank where John Connor goes to the ATM, but they also used the same location in another scene. Right over here in this driveway is where the T-1000 was parked in the police car, talking to the two girls, showing them the picture of John Connor, asking if they know him. So the police car is parked right here in the driveway. The two girls are standing right here, and you can see those two utility poles. And also, look at that do not enter sign that's part of the El Pollo Loco drive through You can just barely see that in the movie. And then when the camera turns slightly and it's focusing more on the T-1000, we can see some of these businesses over here. Now what's probably most noticeable in that scene is a building that's on the far side of that parking lot. In the movie, it looks a lot closer than it actually is. And of course, it's now covered by trees, but the building's still there. So this is that building that you can see across the street and it still matches up perfectly. The awnings over the windows and everything are still exactly the same. And it's kind of crazy because in the movie, the building looks like it's right behind them, but in actuality, they're standing way down there. I don't know if you can see that El Pollo Loco off in the distance, but they're on the other side of that across Roscoe. And like I said, the building looks like it's right behind them, but it's actually quite far. Now they've got some cash, so they head to the mall, and that was filmed at two different malls. The parking garage scenes and all the interior scenes like the arcade and the battle between the two different Terminators, that was filmed at the Santa Monica Place Mall, which can also be seen in the very beginning of Fast Times at Ridgemont High. But unfortunately, in 2008, the original Santa Monica Place Mall was torn down and turned into this outdoor shopping center. So this area in front of me, this is where they film those interior mall scenes, but unfortunately, there's nothing left for us to match up. 
Now for the exteriors of the mall, this gets a bit tricky. There's a couple of videos that you can find on YouTube and a couple of websites that'll tell you that that was filmed here at the Northridge Mall, and that's definitely true. However, they're showing the wrong area. So most people believe that this is the area that was used and that that's the parking garage that John Connor jumps out of on his motorcycle, and that right here is where the T-1000 is running and chasing him. However, this is not the correct area. Now, when they're turning out of the mall, especially the T-800, it's really noticeable in that scene. You can see behind them a street sign for plumber, and it's really hard to see from here, but all the way down there is Plumber Street, and they're a lot closer to Plumber. Also, when the T-1000 is chasing John, just barely you can see behind him that the store is the Broadway, and then when they come out of the mall, they're running alongside Robinson's, and we're gonna head down there right now, and I'm gonna show you where those used to be located. Now, so right down there, that's the parking garage where we just were, but if we come over here, this is where T-2 was actually filmed. If we take a look at this map of the Northridge Mall that I found from 1989, it shows you right here is Shirley Street, which is the street that we're currently standing on. Right here is Plummer Street, which is the street just north of where we're standing. And then right here would have been a parking garage. Right over there would have been the Broadway. And then right here where this movie theater now is, this was Robinson's. So right here, this was the parking garage. This is where he comes out on his motorcycle. And then as I showed you, when he's chasing after John, you can see the Broadway right behind him, which would have been right back there. And then they come out of the driveway and they're going down the street and they pass by Robinson's, which would have been right here where the movie theater now is. I think sometime around 1997, they tore down the Broadway and the Robinson's and they built this movie theater and they built this entire outdoor area. So unfortunately, most of what you see during that scene in T2 no longer exists. I mean, the chase does take place out here here on Shirley, but even most of the stuff that you see during the chase, that's all been changed too. Down that way, everything's been turned into like townhouse apartments. Uh, currently, I'm standing in front of public storage and you do see the storage facility a couple of times, but most everything else here has been changed. Now, there is one other thing. If you pause that scene in just the right spot, you look through the parking garage and you can see some houses and those houses would have been located on Plummer. So if we come here into the parking lot and we look this way, those are the houses that you can see in that shot. John thinks he's found a way to escape and he turns into a driveway, which leads him into the wash. And that would have been somewhere right here. But again, everything here has changed, but there was definitely never a wash around here. And this is it right here in front of me. This is the spot. This is where John stops his motorcycle and then he turns around and he looks at the bridge he thinks he's finally lost the Terminator that's been chasing him. But then as he looks up at the bridge, he notices the semi truck crashing through the wall. So crazy to stand here and look at this and think that this is where it happened. And you can find some behind the scenes footage of them filming that scene, driving the truck through the intersection and then crashing through the wall. So cool to see them filming that. Right over here, this is where it happened. Of course, these planners wouldn't have been here at the time. The truck would have went straight this way and crashed right through the bricks and down there into the wash. And John, for some reason, waits for the truck to be completely inside the wash, but he eventually then does take off and the chase continues this way. The T-800 then shows up and kicks through the gate at the same spot where the truck crashes through the wall. And as he's coming through the gate when the camera shoots the other way, you can see the famous Valley Poodle Hedge behind him. There it is, right over there.
The T-800 would have rode his motorcycle right along here before then flying off the end. And in one shot, there's an apartment building that you can see at the end of this. And there it is right there. T-1000 is driving the truck and then he crashes right into this bridge. And then right past the bridge, this is where John and the T-800 stop and there's that famous scene of them looking back at the flames. This is where the motorcycle is coming down the street and then it rounds the corner and comes into this alley and almost nothing has changed back here. Right here, this is where John was standing and talking to the Terminator. And when they first come into the alley, we get a good shot of everything on the other side right over there. And again, almost nothing has changed. We're now back to the intersection of Osborne and Foothill, right across the street from where the Corral Bar was. And this is where the liquor store was, where the Terminator and John pull over so he can call his foster parents. Now the payphone probably would have been roughly right about where I'm standing because it was right over there where the two muscle heads are getting in their car and then they come running over to help out John. So it would have been right about here where the main gate was and that's where the T-1000 pulls up and talks to the security guard before pulling into the hospital. When John and the T-800 are coming to save Sarah Connor, they first stop right here in the street and you can see this building behind them. It's now pretty covered by trees as usual. They then pull up to the main gate, which again would have been right here and the camera then shoots this way and there's a building that you can see behind them that's now gone, but you can also see this fire hydrant and this tree behind them. Now, after they help Sarah Connor escape from the building, they now have to escape from the parking garage and that was filmed in a completely different place. That was filmed right here at what's now the Peterson Automotive Museum. At the time, it was an abandoned building. It used to be an Orbox department store and this parking garage has changed a lot since then. It's been remodeled at least two or three times. I spent quite a bit of time in here trying to match things up, but like I said, a lot has changed, so I did the best I could. So it's my belief that right here in front of me is where they built a fake elevator for that scene. You can see in this picture of the T-1000 in front of the elevator, on the right side there's a round pillar, and then a round pillar, and then on the left side there's a square pillar, and then a round pillar. And then if you look right here in front of me, on the right side, you have a round pillar and a round pillar. And then on the left side, a square pillar and a round pillar. And that's the only place in this entire parking garage that has that same configuration. Plus the ceiling matches up exactly with what we see in the movie. Once they come out of the parking garage, they're now back at this building and that entire scene was filmed right out here. But again, it looks completely different. At the time, this was just a parking lot. And I tried so hard to find this super secret location where they're driving in the car, but I don't know, for some reason I just couldn't find it. They see a gas station and decide that it's a good place to hide out for the night. And that was filmed right here, but the gas station that you see in the movie has since been torn down and a new one built in its place. 
Now they would have come right in through that driveway and then pulled up to what's now a mini mart before heading inside the garage. Now there is one thing left from this intersection that you can match up from the movie. That building across the street can be seen at least once or twice throughout that scene. The next morning they arrive at Cactus Jack's Market and that was located right here in front of me. Unfortunately, the new owner has recently put a fence around the building, but that post right there is the same one that you see in the movie and that tells us exactly where the gas pumps were located. And if we take a peek over the fence, aside from having a different paint job and obviously not having the Cactus Jack sign on the roof, the building still looks the same. And it was somewhere right over here in this area where the T-800 was putting coolant in the car and the kids were running around them playing with the toy guns. While hiding out in the desert, Sarah lays her head down on the table and slowly drifts off, and that's when we see her nightmare. So Sarah Connor was so obsessed with the apocalypse that she continuously had the same nightmare about it, and that took place here in Elysian Park. This area that I'm currently standing in, this is where the playground was, where she stands and watches the children play. Now we see this area a couple of times in the movie. First, early on when she's still in the hospital and we see just part of her nightmare. And then a bit later in the movie, when she's hiding out in the desert, we see her entire nightmare. And I know that some of you had to have been creeped out by that scene. I've talked about this before. When I was a kid, I was pretty scared of nuclear war. And when I first saw that scene, I was terrified. Now this right here, this is the exact shot that we get with the downtown LA skyline. Of course, there's some new buildings that have been added, but there's still a lot of buildings that you can match up perfectly with what you see in the movie. So right now I'm in Malibu, California, and on that hill right behind me is the house that was used as the home of scientist Miles Dyson. Now there's not too much that you can see of the house from down here on Pacific Coast Highway, but right there, that's the pool area. That's where Miles' wife is relaxing by the pool. And then a bit later in the movie, Sarah Connor comes back here to try and kill Miles Dyson. She's walking somewhere right there on the property by a grassy hill and she sneaks in through the backyard and she tries to kill him. So the building that was used for Cyberdyne is in Northern California, and unfortunately I wasn't able to make it up there for this video. Luckily, my dear old friend Joe Harder now lives up there and was nice enough to go shoot some video for me with a little bit of my direction. Now, if you're wondering why the building appears shorter in real life, that's because they added a glass facade to the front of the building to make it look taller. Now my buddy Joe did try to get permission to film inside the lobby, but they told him that it wasn't possible and they acted like they didn't even know what Terminator 2 was. And then a short time after that, two security guards approached him and told him that he had to leave the property immediately. The big chase at the end takes place on the California 103 in Long Beach. This overhead shot is right at the Pacific Coast Highway exit. The overpass that the helicopter flies under is also just south of the PCH exit. The helicopter is flying alongside this oil refinery, which I believe now is the Valero refinery. It then flies over the pedestrian bridge.
The T-800 slams on the brakes of the truck, causing the helicopter to crash into the back, and that took place right here on this stretch of road. Notice these large electrical towers. And when the T-800 takes the guy's truck and they drive away, you can see these tanks just on the side of the road. The T-1000 is now chasing them in a liquid nitrogen truck. They're still on the 103 traveling over a lift bridge, which used to be located right here on this stretch of road. However, it's no longer here. However, the lift bridge for the train tracks is still located just to the side of this road and can also briefly be seen in the movie. They come off the 103 using the new Dock Street exit and head straight towards this building. This was used as the exterior of the steel mill. And everything here looks pretty much the same. That oil pump is no longer there, but you can see the main building and then this smaller building over here with the stairs on the side. And this right here was the gate that they go through. There would have been a guard shack on the right side and a sign going over the gate that was placed there just for the movie. And you can still see right here a sign that says gate number three. And it even looks like it could be the same one that we see in the movie. The entire end of the movie was Sarah Connor, John Connor, and the T-800 battling the T-1000. That was filmed at the Kaiser Steel Plant. And according to some people that worked on the movie, those beginning war scenes with the humans battling the machines, that was also filmed at the Kaiser Steel Plant. All of that rubble and debris, that was real debris from the steel plant. Probably not the human skulls, but all of the other debris. And right here behind me, this is California Steel Industries. This used to be part of the Kaiser Steel Plant. And then just beyond this is the Auto Club Speedway. That also used to be part of the Kaiser Steel Plant. But sometime in the 90s, that section was sold to a company in China. They came over here, they disassembled the entire thing, and they moved it to China. Now there's some debate as to what section of the steel plant was used for filming Terminator 2. Some people believe they filmed it at what's now California Steel Industries, and some people believe that they filmed it on the side that's now the Speedway. But what we know for sure is they did film it at the Kaiser Steel Plant, so it was definitely filmed here on this property. Now I'm sure most of you are already aware that there's an alternate ending for Terminator 2, which shows Sarah Connor as a grandmother watching an adult John Connor play with his daughter. That was filmed here at the Los Angeles Arboretum. They added in some futuristic looking Washington landmarks behind the fountain. The camera then zooms in to show everybody playing and having a great time in front of the fountain. Since there wasn't an apocalypse, everybody's out here having a great day. Right out here on the lawn is where everybody's playing and enjoying the sunshine. As the camera continues to pan, we see a playground with a bunch of families enjoying the day. The camera moves a bit more and we see Sarah Connor sitting on a bench just beside this sidewalk. She's sitting on a bench right here, talking into her tape recorder and watching John push her granddaughter on a swing set. And if we look right over here, this wall can also be seen behind her when her granddaughter runs over and sits on the bench beside her. So that's gonna do it for this video. As always, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time.